Hello again, I'm Paul Beckwith and I'm continuing my discussions on the uh, tipping points in the Earth climate system and how basically uh, there was an article recently, just a few days ago, by uh, George Monbiot in The Guardian um, about how Earth tipping points could be closer than we think and how our current plans on um, CO2 on, on emission reduction are completely insufficient. They're slow, they're linear, they're incremental, while the climate is changing rapidly, abruptly, it's accelerating, and we're just, uh, we're, we're, we're just getting further and further behind, and we're not actually implementing the um, things that we need to do. We need to stop subsidizing fossil fuels. That's the biggest single thing. You know, until governments do that, we know that they're not serious about addressing abrupt climate change. Okay, so this is the article. I encourage you to have a look at it, you know, Google it and have a look at it. And in the last video, I was talking about this image here where there's all these um, tipping points, you know, around the globe. Some of them are being reached much sooner than other ones, and there's cascading feedback. So one chain thing leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another thing, and we're in a completely different state, um, you know, er of the Earth system. You know, completely different climate, completely different weather patterns through which we have to continue to grow food in sufficient quantities and get enough fresh water for the global population. And this is going to become very problematic um, as we continue to lose Arctic sea ice and it leads to a whole cacophony of other effects around the planet. Um, this, uh, last, this summer, summer 2021, has been horrendous. The, the wildfire, wildfires, the droughts, the flooding, the torrential rains, the wild, you know, the, the, it's, it's just calamity. You know, it's uh, enormously severe consequences from abrupt climate change. Okay, so in this article, you know, we're basically um, seeing changes and we're only 1.1 degree, 1.2 degrees Celsius above the uh, turn of the century uh, baseline. You know, they call it 1850 to 1900 or 1880 to 1910, uh, you know, that type of baseline is what these numbers are all relative to now. And I've talked about base, how those baselines have shifted. Um, okay, so here's the thing about climate breakdown. It's, it will, it's not linear, smooth, or gradual. Um, you know, this type of thought may be referred to as incrementalism. Um, and the other train of thought is catastrophism. And, you know, for most of time, we have these linear, smooth, and gradual changes, and then we get hit with these sudden impacts. So the, the example is a good example is a continental plate might push beneath another, you know, slowly over time, but then suddenly it can get stuck, and then it can go in sudden fits and start, causing periodic earthquakes and tsunamis. Okay, so the atmospheric um, systems, they absorb the stress for a while, and then they can suddenly shift. You know, they're complex systems um, and they can shift. They undergo these abrupt changes from one state to another state. And, you know, the world governments are, pro are have programs designed to avert linear, smooth, and gradual change. They're completely inadequate for the task of in addressing what is really happening um, now the abrupt changes in, in the climate system and the huge consequences that we're seeing now are making it more and more expensive. Current plans to avoid catastrophe would work in a simple system like a wash basin or a bathtub. You close the tap until the water flowing in is less than the water flowing out with the plug open. These type of, um, of, of methods to tackle the problem they're less likely to work in complex systems such as the ocean's atmosphere um, and biosphere. 
Complex systems seek equilibrium. When they're pushed too far out of one equilibrium state, they can flip suddenly into another. It's much easier to push these systems past a tipping point than it is to draw them back. Once you cross the threshold, it's extremely difficult to, uh, to, to, to back off, to go back, uh, because once the transitions happen, often it can't be reversed realistically on human time scales. So the old assumption that the Earth's tipping points are a long way off is beginning to look unsafe. A recent paper warns that the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, the AMOC, which distributes heat around the world and dries the Gulf Stream, may now be close to a critical transition, a tipping point. This ocean circulation, the AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, has flipped between on and off states several times in prehistory, plunging northern Europe and eastern North America into very cold temperatures, heating the tropics because the heat isn't moving from the equator to the tropics, uh, from the equator to the high latitude, so it's staying at the tropics and it disrupts the monsoons. Okay, other systems could be approaching their thresholds, west and east Antarctic ice sheets, the Amazon rainforest, the Arctic tundra and boreal forests are rapidly losing the carbon they store, driving a spiral of further heating. Okay, if we flip into a different state, it could tr from one system, it could trigger the flipping of others. Sudden change of the state might be possible with just 1.5 or 2C of global warming. You know, and a common sign that complex systems are approaching tipping points is rising volatility. They start to flicker, they start to fluctuate, they start to try to spend some time in the original state, some time in a new state, but they don't quite have enough um, oomph to go over, so they go back to the original state. So the extreme weather that we've seen in 2021, heat domes, droughts, fires, floods, and cyclones is frankly terrifying because it seems to indicate a destabilization of the system, which is exactly what we're talking about, these flicker in the complex systems. You know, if Earth systems tip as a result of the heating, there will be little difference between taking inadequate action and taking no action at all. A miss is as good as a mile. Okay, and I'll show you some of these links, um, uh, but I'll you know continue through this article. So, you know, we're talking about net zero. Governments are talking about net zero by 2050, but that's neither rational nor safe. It's true, our only hope of avoiding catastrophic climate breakdown is some variety of net zero. Okay, so th this is so greenhouse gases in the atmosphere would be reduced through a combination of decarbonizing the economy, so the emissions are much lower, and drawing down carbon dioxide that's already in the atmosphere that's been put in, you know, over the last century since the Industrial Revolution. Okay, it's too late to hit the temperature targets, so 1.5 and 2 in the Paris Agreement without doing both. Okay, but net zero by 2050, you know, it's 2050 is 29 years out there. So this basically shunts responsibility across both time and space. Those in power today seek to pass their liabilities to those in power tomorrow. Every industry seeks to pass the buck to another industry. Who is this magical someone else who will suck up all the greenhouse gases. You know, the, their plans rely on either technology or nature to absorb the CO2 they want to keep producing. And, you know, some of the examples are uh, carbon capture and storage, so capturing, catching the carbon emissions from power stations and cement plants and bury, burying them deep in the ground, or direct air capture. Okay, uh, so there's pilot projects on that, but are they scalable? You know, scaling them up is, 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 is going to be uh, the, the issue. Can that be done? So it says, so what's left is nature, the capacity of the world's living systems to absorb the gases we produce. Also the non-living systems, the soils and the rocks and, and stuff. And uh, to give you an example, like in the UK, the farmers union is aiming for net zero. But, you know, that's net zero on farms. They have to be sharply net negative in order to compensate for commitments from other sectors in industry. This means an end to livestock farming. We all have to become vegetarians and the restoration of forests, peat bogs and other natural carbon sinks. 
we're losing the carbon sinks. You know, when all of these techno fixes and offsets are counted, current policies commit us to 2.9 degrees Celsius of global warming. This would be catastrophic for human society. To risk irreversible change by proceeding at such a leisurely pace, to rely on undelivered technologies and non-existent capacities. This is a formula for catastrophe. Okay, we're looking for magic technologies. You know, are we basing the, our, our future on this planet on magic technologies? If Earth systems cross critical thresholds, everything we did and everything we were, the learning, the wisdom, the stories, the art, the politics, the love, the hate, the anger, and the hope will be reduced to stratigraphy, you know, a layer in the rock in the far future. It's not a smooth and linear transition we need. It's a crash course. Okay, so this is actually quite an, it's an excellent article. Again, uh, just Google the title and, you know, have a look at it. Um, yourself. Now, some of the ref, some of the points in here. Okay, there's a number of different papers. So, you know, a number of people. These are all within the last year for the most part. Tipping points induced by parameter drift in, you know, in the ocean. So this is very technical. Lots of um, lots of plots. You know, basically you go from one state to another state. How long does it take? You know, it looks at all of the the math. This paper here is that shows that there's observation based early warning signals for a collapse of the AMOC. Okay, um, a collapse of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation. So if you look at, you know, you'd, be, you'd get a slowing down of the AMOC and suddenly a tipping over. Um, and this has happened in the past and it's been modeled as to the reasons why. And we're getting a critical slowing down and so the you know we're getting some large excursions in the variance in the AMOC, and this is like the flicker, you know, which possibly precedes a complete shutdown of the AMOC. Climate tipping points too risky to bet against. Uh, this um, outlines a number of different um, different tipping points and the level of risk. Um, you know things like ice collapse and biosphere boundaries, you know, the cascading connections between the different tipping points. Okay, they're all related. You know, we've got the, so this is like the, the rainforest, sea ice, cir Atlantic uh, circulation, the boreal forest, coral reefs, Greenland ice sheet, permafrost, West Antarctic ice sheet. Okay, so when you get a collapse of one thing or wrenching massive change in one system, it projects to other systems. Some more studies, uh, studies add to concern about climate tipping. Um, a couple new studies on um, the earth, you know, they, it all shows, it's all showing one thing. Climate's always happening, uh, change is always happening much faster than we expect. And the changes are very extremely serious. And, uh, you know, we're very rapidly approaching tipping points. And actually parts of the climate system are showing this critical slowing down in frequency you know, increase in variability as the system becomes more rigid and less um, flexible, less able to adapt to the slow changes. Okay, it's like it's it's like uh, you know a stiffening of the system, so the vi vibration frequencies are greatly reduced, and uh, you know it's this critical slowing down often leads to tipping. So this is an article here on flickering. These are all open source, so you can uh, get any of these. But flickering gives early warning signals of a critical transition in a lake, to a eutrophic lake state. So, you know, here we are merrily going along, and suddenly uh, you get an abrupt change into a different state. You know, so it talks a bit about the math of bistability and so on. Um, you know, this is a little bit on dar direct air capture. Can it be scalable? And here we go. This is the global mean temperature projected by 2100. The pledges and targets. Uh, the current, you know, so we're nowhere, not even meeting the pledges and targets or the optimistic targets. You know, current policies, you know, between 2.1 and 3.9 degrees Celsius or with a mean of 2.9. We're, we're going to a place we really don't want to go to. 
Thank you for listening.